Hey guys, Mars Lingen here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And so we got a news update today for the global side that confirms the information that was leaked over the weekend. I think it came out actually on Halloween. Um, as you guys know, if you've been keeping up to date with the videos, I was away for the weekend. So I made some tweets about it. We were talking about like the future of the schedule for global, how I think things should change. You know, they should just sync the versions. But that's a topic for a whole other video. Um, we finally have the confirmation that, yes, indeed, the resurrection of F, Blue, Goku and Vegeta exchange unit is the next Dokkan Fest coming to Global. This is what the thank you celebration is going to be for this year and not the LR, Vegeta and Trunks. So this goes back to a, a previous year's format, right? Last year, we got Gogeta in November and so everyone was expecting to get Vegeta and Trunks in November. But Gogeta coming in November last year, he actually came early. Everybody was expecting, if I remember rightly, STR Super Vegeta to drop in his time slot and the Tanabaya LR to come out in December, because that's what's happened in the years before that. So Global continues to change up the schedule uh, year to year, proving once again that Foresight is, uh, only, only goes so far in terms of uh, how you can plan out your summons. But again, I should do a whole video about that, because I feel like people mean different things when they talk about Global Foresight. Like... For me, it's not just enough to know that a unit is coming and that I might or might not want to summon for it in the future. The whole point is to kind of have a good idea of when it's coming so that you don't have a banner that you know you want to summon on that you then think is going to be followed by a couple of easy skips for you, only for it to be followed by a banner that you actually kind of wish you'd summoned on more. So all of that we can get into in a separate video. I think I probably will make a separate video about it. But this is what we know is coming at least in the next week or so on Global. Resurrection of F Stoke on Fest. We're getting the Super Strike revamp for King Cold, which after how good the Mecha Freezer one was, I'm actually very much looking forward to this, trying him out, especially alongside the Mecha Freezer. And we are finally getting the EZA for the Tech Ginyu Force, which is definitely going to be helpful for some people. I've seen a lot of people saying that they are struggling with the special pose uh, mission for Cell Max without the Gammas. And obviously the Ginyu Force team on Global, this is a very valuable piece of that team that is kind of missing. So this is definitely going to be very, very good for a lot of players in that situation. So if we take a look at Goku and Vegeta, um, there's the official uh, Global Twitter has posted the thing with their animations. I actually think the English active skill sounds good for this unit. I think the English one is often very hit or miss. Uh, a lot of the time when they take these voice lines from other games and stuff, um, the emotion in the voice doesn't necessarily fit the animation in the game perfectly. Like, Goku seems a little bit too chill, I think, with some of the, like, you know, comparing it to the animation and, like, the expression on his face when he's saying it. But compared to some of the other global dub, like, active skills, I think this one is pretty good. So, the Resurrection of F, Goku, and Vegeta, they are Realm of Gods or Mastered Evolution, 170, and then an extra 30% to Pure Saiyans. So this is the first 200% lead for, like, the UI Gokus, a couple of other units, so definitely we'll be doing 200% showcases for them. Uh, in the, you start off, obviously, as Goku. He infinitely stacks attack and does immense damage. He has the entrance animation. Uh, you get key three and launch an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super for three turns from the start of the turn. So, obviously, with the infinite stacking, getting that additional super in there is good. Attack and defense 150 plus an additional attack and defense 50% when performing a super. And then an additional attack and defense 25% with each attack performed up to 100%. So... It's attack performed and not super, which means even if you don't get the additional from his uh, passive from the entrance animation, even if you don't get the high chance for it to become a super, it's still two attacks. And then, of course, if you get the hidden potential one as well, again, even if it's not a super, that's three attacks. So you can get mostly built up in the first turn. So, but And, of course, even at the bare minimum, because he has a guaranteed additional on his second appearance, he will be fully built up after two appearances. So then his exchange uh, can be activated from the fourth turn. So obviously, as with these kind of units, you can keep stacking and stacking if you want in the unexchanged form because you infinitely stack attack. And then you can exchange into Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. So Vegeta greatly raises attack and defense in one turn, does immense damage to the enemy. He randomly changes key spheres of a certain type, not in, to rainbow. 
uh, for three turns from the start of the turn. Attack and defense 150 plus an additional attack and defense 50 when performing a super. Chance of performing a crit 25%. And an additional key plus one per key sphere obtained. So if you somehow are able... And he creates them So for the first couple of turns. So it makes it a little bit easier. But if you pick up four rainbow orbs. He just has guaranteed crits. Which is good. And then he gets an additional attack and defense 100%. With uh, one rainbow orb. So he only needs to pick up one rainbow orb. And is obviously significantly better. 100% attack and defense and then he gets an extra 50% defense with three or more rainbow key spheres So people's biggest complaint about him is obviously the fact that he loses the rainbow orb changing after three turns I honestly don't think this unit would even be that broken if he kept it So I'm not too sure why they did that especially considering some of the power creep that we've seen this year But obviously remember these guys are in a weird spot on global because where they released on JP Whilst a lot of people still did find them a little bit underwhelming, they're now releasing on Global after a bunch of units who are... Uh, I mean, they're coming right after the Gammas, who arguably are the two best TURs in the game. So, one thing I will say when it comes to summoning, I'll do a separate video where we break down the banner and stuff like that. But, these guys are a unit that, I think people underrate them. I think they're a fun unit to have. If you have them, there's definitely teams you can run them on where they will perform well. And you'll have fun using them. But, they are definitely not a unit that you have to have in your box. Uh, especially if you've pulled like one or both of the Gammas and you're currently like using their team to plow through all the hardest content in the game. Like, you do not need this unit at all. So, thinking about the things that are going to be coming up, which obviously we're going to talk about, um, I think this banner is a massive skip for most people. Now, they've given out a few free tickets if you've been logging in and doing the countdown missions. So, there are definitely some people out there that are going to pull these guys off of the free tickets, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, obviously as a content creator, I'm going to summon for them. I probably won't chase dupes for them, because obviously I want to go all in on heroes. But I do want to pull them and try them out. Uh, it feels like another one of those banners where because it's a unit that I don't particularly care about getting, I'm going to end up pulling multiple copies of them very quickly. And uh, then Heroes is going to make me chase the last unit I need to rainbow or something, but we'll see. And of course their side banner unit is the... Uh, wait, where is Jacko? Did I... Oh, there you go. I put the pages the wrong way around. Well, we're going to talk about King Cold next. But Jacko, he's a Defenders of Justice leader. He's on special pose. So again, another character that could be helpful if you're still trying to do the Cell Max mission. He has a built-in 70% chance to dodge. Um, as the... Wait, great chance of evading as the first attacker in the turn. Oh, wait, he has a thing built in, doesn't he? I swear. Um... Key 3, attack and defense 140. Great chance of evading enemies' attacks as the first attacker in the turn. Attacked enemies, attack and defense minus 20% for two turns, and a high chance of evading enemy attacks as the second or third attacker in the turn, plus an additional 80, attack 60% when attacking an extreme class enemy, plus an additional attack and defense 20% up to 80% with each attack evaded. So I thought I was reading this wrong, because for some reason I was under the impression that a lot of people were using this guy as a slot 1 unit, but... He is he getting his dodge as the first attacker in the turn. So in slot one, he doesn't have the 70% chance to dodge. Um, although this says uh, activates before attacking. So maybe this is one of the... I don't know. I'm very confused. I could have sworn that they changed the wording for if it activates in slot one before you attack. But on the wiki, it says as the first attacker in the turn, which would imply that it doesn't. But then it, down here it says activates before attacking. So, I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I, the wiki is very confusing. Uh, someone can let me know down below in the comments. I was pretty sure he uh, had that dodge before attacking. But otherwise that makes him a very weird unit. Because like, why would you put him in slot 1 if he then doesn't have the dodge chance? But if it does work like that, then obviously very good for um, Cell Max and... Uh, any of these other kind of difficult events where dodge is not disabled. So next up we have King Cold. Like I say, very much looking forward to this guy. He greatly raises attack and defense for one turn on super. Does supreme damage and lowers attack and defense. He gets attack and defense 100%. Additional key three, attack and defense 50%. And wicked bloodline allies, attack and defense 25%. When HP is 50% or more. So it's going to be up a decent amount of the time. Especially with all the healing on the wicked bloodline team. All enemies attack 25% and defense 50%. Just as part of his passive that was one of the reasons why the older one even before his easy a was actually useful for things like super battle road because of that passive attack lowering 
Um, then he gets an additional 100% defense and a medium chance to seal all enemy super attacks when your team has an ally whose name includes Freezer attacking in the same turn. And there is a pure or hybrid Saiyans category enemy. So quite a bit of um, restriction there. But obviously when it's something like Super Battle Road, then this is where this is going to come in useful, right? Because you're going to have a Freezer on your team. A lot of the enemies in the... Super Battle Road stages for extreme types are pure Saiyans or hybrid Saiyans. So the fact that he gets extra defense and then a chance to just seal all the enemies is obviously very useful. And then he gets an attack buff when the enemy is sealed as well. So on paper, he doesn't seem as crazy as Mecha Freezer, but because they have some of those like Super Strike only links, then I feel like that rotation could be quite fun on the 200% team. Definitely going to show that off. Um, and then, of course, the Tech Ginyu Force EZA is the last uh, thing that we are getting here. Greatly raise attack and defense on both their supers. Um, the 18 key also does uh, raise extreme class allies attack by 30% for one turn. So, they're not usually going to be a slot 1 unit, but that definitely is a nice added effect. If you put them in slot 2, then obviously the slot 3 unit is going to benefit. Uh, they get key 3 attack and defense 59%, additional attack and defense 10%, up to 59% per Ginyu Force ally on the team. Extreme class allies attack and defense 30%, and then Ginyu Force allies attack and defense 29% in addition. So they are giving all the Ginyu Force allies 59% attack and defense, which considering the buffs to uh, special pose uh, damage against Cell Max, having this guy on rotation is uh, going to increase that firepower significantly and definitely make that special pose mission a little bit easier and just to confirm for people i did see someone talking about on the timeline it is an extreme z area for these guys you don't have to buy the medals with battlefield memories like you do with the physical one so looking at the schedule so this is where the resurrection of f blues released on jp may of this year after the golden week stuff basically and we've had a little bit of a change around because this is where they got the mecha freezer super strike revamp which obviously we have had already um, they also got the LR Metal Cooler um, EZA, which I'm kind of hoping we do get soon as well. As somebody who's obviously, you know, I've talked about it a lot, been a big fan of the Wicked Bloodline team since the uh, download celebration, then um, I'm very much looking forward to this EZA. So maybe that will come a little bit later. As an, I don't think it's, it's not, obviously we haven't got the full celebration info yet. So that wasn't in the news, but obviously could be a thing that comes up. And then following on from that, obviously, you can see here we have the Ginyu Force. Then we have the Int Angel Golden Freezer EZA. So that could be part of the celebration as well. New stage for Super Battle Road came out. And this is when JP first got the movie collaboration stuff. And then we got a World Tournament and the King Cold Super Strike revamp. So be interesting to see whether they fit a um, World Tournament in here on Global. Because the way the rest of the year, or especially the rest of the month, is looking... It could be pretty sparse because the part two LR for the resurrection of F Blues is Golden Freezer. But usually the Dokon Fest that they bring out in November, we don't get the part two LR from that celebration because we move into Heroes. So if we go back to last year, this is the global timeline. November, this is where they released uh, the Tanabata LR from JP. The LR Gogeta with the side banner unit Gotenks coming out on the 4th, which I believe is literally, yeah, the same day, right? It's coming out on the 4th, at least for me. It'll be the morning of the 4th Friday um, that the Resurrection of F-Blues come out. So this is this same time slot. And then we got their EZAs and things, new Super Battle Road stage, etc. And then we moved into Heroes on the 25th of November. Now, if we go back to the year before that, it's funny to think this was only two years ago. But the year before that, this is what I've been saying to a lot of people on Twitter. A lot of people were disappointed that the thank you celebration for Global is just a Dokon Fest that, you know, a mid Dokon Fest from JP and not the Tanabata LR. But last year was the first time they moved the Tanabata LR to November. The year before that, Global was still stuck in this hellhole that the November thank you celebration was when Global got the Golden Week units because Golden Week did not used to be on both versions at the same time. And the biggest problem with that is like for me personally, I liked this in Gotenks when he first came out. The problem is because we had to wait so long because they just, you know, stuck these units in a pigeonhole that these Golden Week units come out in November on January. Uh, on global they were basically power crept by the time they came out and it made summoning for them so much less hype 
Because even though you wanted them as a global player, you'd seen them being used on JP, or maybe you didn't want them, it doesn't really matter, right? But you knew there was already multiple better units potentially coming out. And depending on how global changes up the timeline, they could have quite easily released one of the later Dokon Fest exclusives from uh, JP before the thank you celebration, meaning they'd literally power crept to the units before they even came out on global. So that's one thing you have to bear in mind, that this is uh, November used to be just the golden week dumping grounds from JP until they made it both versions at the same time. And then if we go to December of 2020, this is where the Tanabata unit came out. So I would say if we're obviously again with global, it's hard to say what they're doing nowadays. But if we were going to guess, this is now going to be the time slot where Trunks and Vegeta come out. Because this is the previous pattern that they were following up until last year. And then, of course, Global got this as a... It wasn't... I don't... I can't, there was no Part 2 LR for the, these guys on JP. I'm fairly sure when they first came out. And so we got this banner as a Double Rates Christmas banner at the same time as JP. So, obviously, this could be the time slot where they could put in uh, LR Merge Zamasu. And potentially even be a Double Rates banner, which means it would be a Carnival banner. Which obviously would be pretty awesome, right? I mean, there should be a double rates carnival banner before the end of the year anyway. But if it ends up for Global being the Merge Zamasu banner, then that is uh, definitely a bit of a W. So going by this year, where the Tanabata LR is in December, this is what we can kind of expect from the timeline. So roughly around here is when the Resurrection of F-Blues are going to drop. We get all the stuff from their celebration. And then last year, Heroes actually started on the 19th because there wasn't a huge amount to fill this couple of weeks and then Heroes began and ran until basically the end of November. Remember last year we also got a lot of crossover buffs when the Hero stuff came out. Um, we got the Hero stuff coming out here. And then we also had like the Awakenings for Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. The Super Saiyan 2 Trunks finally. So I think or at least hope that Heroes is going to start that week earlier this year. Because if you think about it with the stuff coming out now. Uh, this is the celebration again from JP. We basically have, from now, if they release Heroes at the same time as they did last year, we pretty much have three weeks until Heroes comes out. Where all we are getting is the new unit and side banner unit. One Super Strike EZA that we know of. We don't know if we're getting Metal Cooler yet. Um, and then, what? Extreme Z area and another Extreme Z battle. Maybe a new Super Battle Road stage. And that's basically it, right? Potentially a world tournament. I could see them filling out the last like part by putting in a world tournament, I guess. But it would be super good if, because this is quite scarce, if they were to follow not last year's timeline, but the year before and release Heroes slightly earlier. Because I think that would be the best case scenario. So that is what the end of the year is kind of looking like for Global. Obviously, we have no way to know 100%. The fact that they change everything so much is uh, constantly going to keep us on our toes. So let me know what you guys think down below. What are your summon plans now for the rest of November and the rest of the year? I know a lot of people, especially in my community, since we talk about it so much, are very hyped for heroes. So I would imagine a lot of people, the Resurrection of F-Blues, are going to be an easy skip. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. So... That is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master again. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.